everybody and welcome back to the All Right Podcast with me, your host, Anthony O'Reilly Jr. Remember, it's not the best podcast, it's not the worst podcast, it's just the All Right Podcast. Every Monday at 5pm on Spotify and YouTube and this week's guest is... Hello, hello, hello and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Um, so this week I will have on a guest and not... You're the first, actually, this is your first ever time appearing on the All Right Podcast as well. Yeah, it's my first time, and I'm finally glad to do it. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we're going to get into this. Everybody knows the drill already. It's a half an hour long. Um, as you can see right now, the camera's going back and forward. It's on me. It's on you. It's on me. It's on you. It's on me. It's on you. Oh, my God, it's going to be a nightmare to edit. Okay, so for the people that know who you are, please introduce yourself and, and stuff like that as well, please. Um, hi, my name is Daniel Alcatan. I am a half Arab, half German filmmaker, um, musician, well, aspiring musician, and I... I'm just basically moved to Ireland to be more involved with the arts. Yeah, yeah, and I, I want to ask as well, how long was it since you moved to Ireland? I moved here four and a half years ago, actually. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I want to ask as well, we're going to get straight into it, um, what made you want to become a filmmaker? I always loved films, actually. Like, I don't think there was ever a time I never loved films. Like, even as a kid, I, I think I watch movies and I get so embedded into them, and then, and you know, like, I used to, I think, believe that TV represented real life. So I was like, oh, my God, I want to be in those kind of adventures, too. Like, I used to watch, like, uh, Doris Day when she was Calamity Jane or even watch, like, you know, you have kids. We watch Peter Pan and stuff. And I was like, and then, you know, as you go older, you know, everyone's telling you, oh, they're not real. But then I was like, oh, I want to be part of it somehow. I want to be part of the magic, eat, like, uh, like creating the magic. I fell in love with how people make films. I love even seeing behind the scenes of Tim Burton's films because I see how much work they put into the production design, to the wardrobe, to the way they film. I mean, like the Maison Song. All of, all of, it's, I'm so in love with that. I'm still very passionate about that. So that's, and I love editing and doing camera work, all of that. I'm just really in love with it. Yeah, well, I, I can tell from right there. That's what I like about getting people onto this podcast that have, you know, that have a passion for stuff. If I ask a person just like yourself, what are you passionate about? You'll go on and on and on and on and on and you wouldn't get sick and tired. You could sit here all day and you could talk about it. And that's what the kind of the, the idea for the podcast is, is to get create people on that have stories and, you know, have experiences and, and the likes that and they can and they can tell them and share them to, you know, the audience that are watching right now. So you are saying there that you, you like um a lot of for me what I what I'm hearing now is that you like a lot of the, you know, uh, pre-production stuff as well like you like all the setup and getting ready which a lot of people don't like but it's very unique that you like even them little bits of details that you can get into um, what would you say in the whole filmmaking aspect um, what would you be your most like you know your number one profession what would you like to do of, uh, while being a filmmaker I think the one thing I'm very adamant about being part of is like cinematography like I, when I first came here, I had no idea which aspect I wanted to get involved with. I was starting out in Paul's College where I was really getting an idea of what film, what the film world was like, like how to produce, how to get people together. Like, was, this was like the first time learning. I learned rather quickly, and I was starting to realize that I love doing cinematography because the visuals, it, that's the huge part of film, the part of the story. And, and if you do it right... The visuals can be beautiful. They can really draw a person in, and that's part of the the huge part of the magic is what I want and what I really want to do. And and you're talking about visuals there. Oh, I want to ask oh, of all the films you've seen so far, what is the most beautiful uh, piece of cinematography you've seen in a film, or what is a film that you know uh, with cinematography that you could watch again and again? Um, there's a variety. Like I. I like the way they did. Um, there's Pan's Labyrinth. Um, there's um, Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan. I like that. The, I like that because um, the cinematographer Matthew Libatique, um, he put a lot of thought into his um, shot list. It wasn't just like, like I mean, like you didn't have the standard kind of filming. His filming was more like, how does the character feel? And that the way the character felt reflected through the camera angles. Like they would do a lot of close up. Um, tracking shots from behind her um, it was handheld a lot of the time and it kind of like symbolized how like those who had like a paranoid schizophrenic would feel and it was kind of obvious that the character had that kind of condition possibly that she was maybe 
like had that paranoid schizophrenia. Um, and I found that really interesting. And it did reflect in the film because then they made the audience feel just as claustrophobic and paranoid as she did. And I, I, I heard as well, you were just saying there that you went to Pul- uh, was it Pulse College is it? and so like that as well. Talk a bit more about Pulse College because I, for myself, uh, a few years ago, I saw that advertised and I was looking into it as well and I just never went and done it. So from your perspective, how was that journey f- to do it? How many years uh, have you done it for? Are you still in it? So many questions, <laughs> but you can answer them all anyway. So. Um, so... My first year here was basically to come to Pulse College. I did not think I was going to stay longer than eight months in Ireland, um, but I was graduated from high school. I I was an average student, and I, unfortunately, and this I'm pretty sure a lot of people can understand, you have those counselors who say, "Uh, you're not going to be, you're not good enough for any university. So in my head, I was like, might as well do something I love, go to film school. I could afford it at least, and... Yeah, and so when I came here, I remember how in love I was. Like, I moving to a new city and just, there was, there's so many charming aspects of it, but being at, oh, you're okay, you're okay. being in Paul's college, um, it was great because um, we were a class of like 20 people and we were all the same people. We all had, to, we were all same class, same room mostly, depending on the subject, different teachers and like, and just, it was more close knit rather than university, to be honest. Now being in university, like I actually can see like how there was a nice um, camaraderie. Like I liked how um, at the time people were very like, um, I, how do I say it? Like there was a nice repartee amongst each other. We were very close. We did a nice amount of projects together and it hel- And they, they got us a lot more into practical work and to get out into the field and experience things for ourselves, which I really like. And I feel like I, lo- I learned so much from that, that after college, not expecting to stay here, I actually then was like, I'm going to be a producer. Yeah. Even though I didn't have any experience being a producer, I knew what it did, took to be a producer because I saw it from everyone else. And I did it for, um, for his eyes only. I was first with a writer because um, there was a time maybe in the end, unfortunately, I was bullied. And I mean, I was 19. I know I did stupid mistakes for myself, so um, I can't really. But... Um, I guess I wanted to prove myself, and this writer I met who was going to audition for a short film of mine for the end of the year, um, he didn't get the part because my producers basically chose for me. They didn't allow me options, but um, when I met him, he showed me his writing. It wasn't the best writing, but his ideas and concepts were very interesting. So I was willing to work with him, but I told him he had to clean it up, his writing. Um, Unfortunately, that didn't work out, but because of that pushing the idea that I wanted to make his film, that I put a sign out saying I was looking for a crew, where I met um, a really nice cinematographer named Michael Moore. And it was, and you know, even though the other writer didn't work out, Michael introduced me to Tom O'Brien, who actually was a brilliant writer. He wrote up a script in a few days. And over time, that script, even though it evolved to something else completely in the end, even that first draft, It was just mind-boggling. It was so well-written. It was so captivating. It had such an interesting story. It pulled you in. And that was, and and being able to work with these guys, like, and put so much of our passion and heart into it, it came out a very brilliant um, short thriller. And, and I'm really, so I'm really proud of being able to do that. And I can thank Paul's College with the great teachers I had, um, and the experience they gave us to be able to do that after college. Well, that's come here. Look, that's a lot of uh, positive um, feedback from just that one question. So I, I can tell right then there that you did enjoy your time at Pulse College as well. And I, I, I know Tom. I know Tom. I only know him recently now, uh, and so like that as well. But I won't get into any of that now. It's about yourself now. <laughs> this uh, episode. But I want to go back to what you said about. Uh, the counsellors in school mm. because I was the very same. They said I shouldn't go to a university, I wouldn't be capable of doing that. I'm not very good at communication and talking to people. So, yeah, very strange. And the, the, they said I wouldn't get concepts or anything or, you know, and, and the likes of that. And I, I want to ask uh, yourself right now when you achieved what they said you couldn't do, how do you feel about yourself? 
um, when you finally you know got that certificate of degree and said you know what fuck these people you know I've done it so for yourself please explain how that emotion was and how how you were feeling it felt really great actually um I I actually literally thought for like the longest time that all I was good for was just getting a diploma from Pulse College but you know and I thought even even at times in Pulse as great as the teachers were I had my own troubles I was still my self-esteem was really low so like I did not think I could accomplish much so knowing that I was able to produce knowing I'm able to even have I'm now in university in DCU I have one year left for my degree knowing that I'm doing that now makes me feel really proud of myself knowing like and I was so adamant I was like I know I'm gonna do this I know I can do this and by some miracle by some beautifulness of faith like I was be I was able to have those doors opened to be pushed towards that and I'm really happy about that and I like knowing that people from before just because they were older doesn't mean they know everything about you I think for anyone who's out there I know there are people who are still in school and maybe a lot of their teachers always say to them ah you're you're like this you're never going to be able to do this I encourage anyone not to listen to them only and like and those are not proper teachers to be honest teachers should never do that they should encourage they should advise um criticism in a fair way not in a way where they're putting you down I, which a lot of people don't really know sometimes they just hear they think that's normal they're thinking oh shish kebab if this person's saying that that means how am i gonna how do i know if i could actually do it it's a scary thing and it's not fair that some adults do put that on developing minds especially like in a teenage time like you're very vulnerable hormones and are through the roof everything feels more intense than they should yeah i'm um, i i remember when i was in school and i was going into fifth year and um i was told that i had to do lca and i said i i think i can go up uh, and so and um i remember my teacher that was just coming to principal at the time she literally pulled me aside outside and said listen you can't do anything above LCA. Um, if you want to, you're gonna have to move to a different school because we're not going to put you in 20 oak. And at the time I was like, okay, that's that's grand, that's no bother. But looking back on it now, as you get older, you can kind of see that's kind of fucked up. Um, and I, I think you're right, you should never put anyone down if you are giving them criticism or so. It has to be in a po positive way as well. I think that's 100%. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm going to move on now to, um, i seen that you are directing the first, I, I want to talk about this first before we move into that, actually, sorry about that. Um, me and yourself, we first met on when we were doing stuff for Bobby um, and yeah. stuff like that as well. You were doing sound as well, weren't you? Yeah, and I was just doing camera work. I'm the same as yourself with cameras. I'm still learning. I, I, I haven't gone in air cameras. I'm more, I like writing, that's what I like doing. I want to get into cameras and I, I'm in the exact same level as yourself, only a beginner and stuff like that. And um, and for the likes of yourself, it was it was okay for me on the day when I was doing it, but I want to ask you, ask you as well, you are do, you are directing music videos and I, 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 I can't remember the guy's name now, um, but I'm pretty sure you'll let us know anyway. Um, but I want to ask, how, how was that experience filming a, a music video? Um, it was my first music video, and it was for my dear friend Michael Moore, um, like the same guy who did the cinematography for, for His Eyes Only, um, which I mentioned with Tom O'Brien. He is now a musician. He went previously by Crescent Moon, but now he's known as Ghost Boy, I guess, to anyone who's a rap fan. Check out his uh, stuff. He's got some nice beats. Um, yeah, and so I was down in Galway, and... A lot, he the concept we knew the location we knew how we wanted it to look in terms of lighting that was discussed amongst each other and then when the camera was on I just wanted to make sure I, I was still learning you see, you see like at one point we were filming it was a dim lit room and I might have went a bit crazy with the ISO where there's a little bit of grain I tried my best to fix it in color grading but you know but I think it went okay you know again I'm still learning but still I um I was having fun doing a lot with movement. Like I liked, I, mean, I liked music videos to have movement and it was a great experience, especially with raps. It's a great way to do it because it has a lot of beats, a lot of m moments where it's like you, you get into the vibe of it so rather than having it static. And it taught me a lot about like 
what those movements mean and how to put that with the song, song with the song <laughs> with the rhythm of things sorry i'm giving long answers no that's okay and um, this is it's a podcast literally no one wants to be looking at me and listening to me talk it's literally about me getting the guest on and um, so you talk as long as you want that's not bother whatsoever um but um for the force music video please let uh, go through the day that it was um you know because uh, i know when it comes to filming everything's not going to go to plan oh yeah no so, you know, so. they usually don't um I think the first day was easiest because I had, um, like, um, my good friend, Greg Young, who, amazing filmmaker, love working with him. He's honestly one of the best people I enjoy working with when it comes to film. He was helping a lot as gaffer, um, and with his help on the first day, everything just looked really good. Like, we were able to get the right lighting, um, and I was able to just have my way with the camera, just, like, like... It was actually, I don't know, it was kind of instinctive when it came to how to move the camera. It took a while, of course, to get the right aperture and such and to get the proper focus because when you're moving a lot, focus can sometimes be iffy. But um, along the second day, I remember this was a couple weekends later, we went down to the gardens. And I know we were hoping for a clearer day, but it was kind of cloudy and we were just trying to make sure he had the proper light. I, uh, another friend of his, um, I forgot his name and I'm really sorry about that, but he... Um, he, we had a fusion and we used that actually to help light him up um, and we just kind of like and, and this was a funny thing we did a tracking he had to follow me like which was so difficult but and because I didn't have a gimbal or anything what I did was I used um, the strap and I just like basically to to help with um, to not make it shaky I just pull it all the way to the front so that way it had some kind of stabilizer um, in a sense, like, and so, which helped a lot, but like, with, with, with tracking and going backwards, your man coming forwards, and then your man behind you with the light, it was, it took a while to get the gist of it, um, we had to work different sort of angles and scenarios, but it did work out, and, and it was fun, I had a fun time in the gazebo where we just kind of went in a circle, and he was just like, going around like, hey, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and 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 for yourself as well did you did you have to edit that after because you had the you know the, the idea and the image in your head of what way you'd like this to be so did you have to edit and how was the edit editing process oh yeah no um i had to edit um and the editing process was actually uh there was difficulty i know there are times of course the artists would say oh, i'm not a fan of this shot can we replace that i'm like all right yeah sure let's see what else i can do you have to make sure when it comes to these things um it's easy with a music video versus film, to be honest, because with a music video, you know how it feels through the rhythm. You know when to cut to another shot when you feel, and then like, and you look at the m movements of the artist, and it just kind of comes together. The harder part was color grading, because there were times, and I think the like, there were times I made him look a little bit too yellowish or too pink. And I know sometimes with skin tones, it can be very difficult. It took a while to find just the right neutralness that just, but still popped in a very nice way that it was like, ah, I like that vibe, you know? Yeah, I, I'm, I haven't even started trying to do color grading yet or nothing like that. I, I know that it, it takes some time and not even a few months. It takes a few years to even perfect something like that as well, you know? And, and so, um, but um, I, I want to ask as well, um, when you, I'm asking, I've asked two people this already, um, and I want to ask all my guests, so for the likes of yourself as a filmmaker and a director, for anybody out there now watching that wants to, you know, direct or so, um, I have this thing, and I've heard it from someone saying, it's a toolbox, and say you have a toolbox right now on you, and you have three things that you think is so important to have in your toolbox while being a, being a director, um, Please let us know what would them three things be and um, that you, you could give advice to someone out there. Um, I remember this from The Narcissist where I, I think the best thing to have is always have your notes. Like notes, script, and you know a pen really. I mean, because you see as a director, your job is mostly to, you know, like... Um, Make sure that you're happy with the shot the cinematographer provides. Like, you, you discuss how you want things to move along with the cinematographer. You're basically, like, you organize m the movement in some sense, but mostly you focus on the actors, their chemistry towards each other. 
and how so it's like the best thing is to have a script you have your little notes beside it sometimes it's good to have a notebook being like all right like um in this scene this character is going through this what's the best way to create that arc because you know like through like i learned i've been learning now mostly when it comes to acting sh- from certain certain yes Stanislavski. um i hope i said it right yeah that's okay don't worry i get mixed up yeah that. yeah don't worry He's Russian. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was through that I understand that the, I think to me, I consider that a good way of acting because you're looking at the script and you're looking at the lines and seeing what's happening. And then it's a natural arc. You're not, because you know, one thing I learned is if you tell an, an actor, oh, this person is angry in that scene, it's going to be a very flat performance. They're going to be angry in every single tone. Whereas if you say, okay, this is like, Right now, he's like this. It starts off with him coming in from this situation. How do you like, you know, like if you were to say, Oh, he just found out some bad news, and it's that, and then you see a line where another character says something, but that line then sparks another feeling in that other character. And so, it's like a lot of it is to do with dialogue, seeing what's going on in the dialogue, and from that, can you get the performance? You have to be able to, of course, communicate that with your actors as yeah. best way as possible. That's why I always have a notebook where you can describe it, even have little margins between your script and have your pen on you. Basically, those, I think, are very important. Yeah, um, I want to ask as well, because you were talking about uh, chemistry there, um, how important is it, in your opinion, for act- two actors, say if it was like, you know, in a scene itself, or any actors, how, how important is it for yourself that the um, actors, uh, their chemistry is, how, how, how is it? I say it's extremely important like people who watch films a lot of the time whether it's conscious or not we put ourselves in the film if we care about it you have to want to care about these characters and that doesn't happen if they don't have good chemistry i saw something where two people clearly did not have any chemistry so i did not care about what happened to their relationship i didn't care about how they progressed so the chemistry between two characters i know when of course like um Writing a character on its own is a different story. You want to see how they progress and develop as characters, whether they have a changing point. But between, like, different characters, the relationships, it has to have a good chemistry. Otherwise, no one's going to care. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right with, with the likes of that as well. Um, I think that it's so important for a debate, like, the likes of rehearsals and so as well, and, 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 and to get them to work with each other so they know the cue points and so, and when they come in, when not, and... You know, and, and the likes of that. Um, I want to ask as well now, it's it's 23 minutes, I think, into the podcast, so we only have a few minutes left, but I want to ask you this question because we've all experienced it, the whole world has experienced it. Um, as a creative person during the pandemic, um, how did you keep that creativity flow going? I'm not going to lie when I say... I, I, I suffer with depression... And I know anyone who's close to me knows that. It's yeah. not a secret. Yeah. I have moments when things can be very dark. Yeah. And I remember when COVID first started, um, I was so depressed. A friend of mine didn't help by saying, we're never going to enjoy life again. And I was like, you bastard. Why are you telling me this? I'm already in a bad place. Don't be throwing that. Like, But still, um, so I at first started with a lot of grieving. Yeah. It kind of, I, I drank a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. I was really depressed, listened to music, all that shish kebab. But, yeah. <laughs> but then I think going home helped because, for one thing, gets me away from the alcohol. I went back home to um, the Middle East where my mom was. It was tough. Even like even when I was home the first couple of weeks, I couldn't even hug her. Yeah. And then the next couple – and then I spent a whole month at home, couldn't go outside, and I had a serious case of cabin fever. But I think that kind of then like – in some weird way, the darkness helped me want to put it somewhere. Because when you have so much darkness inside you, you want to put it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Something I learned is like, especially I think when it comes to emotions, I was able when I'm frustrated or when I feel something really big inside me, I started to learn that I was able to put that into lyrics. And I always tried writing lyrics growing up, but then around that time, I felt I was putting more into it, and I was then I made. A couple songs actually some songs just came out of nowhere and just like the right melody the right 
words came out and i was like start and i was starting to and i was usually really scared of what was putting music out i used to be criticized a lot saying i wasn't a good singer and so i felt i felt i wasn't good enough so i did, so i was afraid that if i put myself out there i'd just be ridiculed or criticized in a very harsh manner so but it was around that time i then had the courage to just do it and i put out my first song first time i ever showed anyone a song of mine and i put it out on facebook it was called if i could take the hurt away and then after that followed up other songs i wrote one in italian even yeah. which really came out of nowhere i had that idea in the shower i it was just like i had a melody in my head and then little words like that i, I didn't know italian but i just words like um la sera which means the evening and i was like and then i had an idea in my head and then i worked with a great um musician named david hamilton i provided him the melody i had in mind and like and then he put a beautiful orchestra for it which you can find on youtube right now like he he made what was in my head come to life and i was so happy about that and just being able to i think music being able to put all that emotion somewhere helped a lot during covid and then when it was actually made the songs it it was like a release yeah and it was it was a beautiful release honestly um what I hear from that is I think a lot of creative people um, do kind of suffer from, you know, uh, depression or anxiety or something like that as well. And I think that's the course that comes with being so creative and wanting to do something like that. Um, but I know for a fact myself, I would rather deal with that and have that creative mind and the same as yourself than to just be non-creative not wanting to do anything passionate or so so just just remember that like when you are in them times inside like that and you do feel like that just remember that i can go and you know the thing where you were saying about the shower i totally understand that you can go on a walk you can be in the shower whatever and just something pops in your head and you can't get rid of it and that's your main focus and what you're what you're doing right now at the moment and what you're working towards always remember that that when you do feel like that and so just say right i don't feel the best now i'm instead of you know sitting here and you know i know as hard as it is the yoke as the is to sit here in it do you go for them showers from long showers with the heat on your back inside that and, and it will relax you more as well you know you know yourself and you can you will slowly come out of that 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 mindset and when you do I understand it's it's a great feeling because you just want to do so many things because you have so many ideas from when that comes out um, uh, it's literally the podcast is literally going to be over right now as well and um, we only have a minute or so uh, but I want to say thanks very much for coming on I want you to come back on and I'd love to talk more about that topic if, if you're okay you said you're comfortable with it so I'd love to talk to you about that topic as well and how you know you cope with you know you know um, and the likes of them stuff also and um, but thank you so much for coming on yeah no worries <laughs> I was um, glad to be here yeah perfect <laughs> um, and guys thanks so much for watching uh, remember every Monday at 5 p.m. Uh, on YouTube and also Spotify, the RA podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, it's not the worst podcast, it's just an all right, right podcast. podcast. Right, it's okay, everybody loves saying that. Right, guys, <laughs> thanks so much for uh, joining us. Uh, thanks so much to the guests, and we will chat you again in a bit. Right. Perfect. Bye. Bye. <laughs> right, lovely. That, lovely. Was a, that was fucking great. That was, that was so good.